Behold, the Lord will come and all his holy ones with him, and on that day there will be a great light. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, today we celebrate the Tuesday of the first week of Advent, and today as we celebrate this Mass, we offer this Mass for the repose of the souls of Dr. Nehemio Chan Tan and for Salvador Martinez. And we also continue to pray that our lives will continue to be filled with hope and joyful expectation during this time of so, my dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now take a moment to acknowledge our sins, and together will we ask God's pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord, on our petitions, and in our trials grant us your compassion and help, that consoled by the presence of your Son, whose coming we now await, we may be tainted no longer by the corruption of former ways. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's like lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal to the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment, and thou the King, and with your justice the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. He shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, and the lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and full
fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I say to you, many prophets and kings desire to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The season of Advent that we celebrate each year is, I believe, intentional so that we can be constantly and consistently be reminded of God's providence for us and faithfulness and commitment to His promise. That today, that as we listen to the first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the prophet reminds us of that promise that God has committed himself to do for us in order to bring us to the joy of his salvation, the joy of restoration. It is in this very reading that I myself find great fascination of how Isaiah envisioned this time of fulfillment of unlikely companions to be sitting, lying, and being together. The lamb and the leopard, the wolf and the lamb, the leopard and the kid, the calf and the young lion, the child playing in a cobra's den. I mean, these are unthinkable pairs, yet this is what Isaiah reminds us of that time of fulfillment, of how things will be when the Lord brings to completion His promise to us. And the Advent season is an opportunity for us to bring ourselves back to that hopefulness, that state of hopefulness that we are called to have and share with the world so that they can share with that same hope and be with us in our joyful expectation of the fulfillment of the promise. When we look into the gospel read today, Jesus also reminds his listeners of how these great mysteries of God's saving grace is somehow not revealed to the wise and the learned, but rather revealed to those who are childlike. And I often, every time I come upon this reading, I, I like to emphasize saying childlike, not childish. 
Because that is a very big distinction. When we become childlike, we live in a way that our trust and faith in our Heavenly Father, in His intention to fulfill His promise, we take it in, in, its, in its fullness and its face value. That is what it's like to be childlike. And also, when we look into how we are to be with one another, there is a certain childlikeness that we are called to live, to live by. Especially when it comes to reconciliation and forgiveness. One of my favorite things to do is, you know, visit visit schools and you know they see observe children as they play. It is often a source of fascination for me to see them play and at a certain point find themselves in conflict. And sometimes the teachers or the parents would come in and tell them say I'm sorry and they would have reluctantly say sorry to one another. But what brings me to great fascination is that Barely a few minutes, somehow, they seem to forget that just a few minutes ago, they were fighting with one another. There is a certain childlike attitude that we may perhaps need to engender in ourselves these days, especially as we experience what we are experiencing nowadays in, in, our, in our own families, in the political discourse in our, in our um, ways of dealing with the pandemic. You know, there's the one thing that I also see is that children will not hesitate to share with one another. Well, for the most part, the ones that I have seen, but for more, more often than not, they have no hesitations of, of being together, being with one another. So I think today, on this Tuesday of the first week of Advent, let us remind ourselves of how we may need to engender childlike attitudes, childlike behaviors, childlike, not childish, I need to very precise that, so that in our efforts to witness to this great hope and, and witness to the joy of Expecting the fulfillment of the promise, the coming of the Lord, we may perhaps be that light that shines in the darkness, the people who bring hope because we also live by that hope. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, we now pray to the Father whose love for his people is without end. That the churches living and preaching the gospel may be marked by the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all who exercise authority in society will use it with integrity and justice, especially towards those who are most poor and weak, we pray to the Lord. That we may learn to hear the call that comes to us from the little ones of the world, we pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. That we will respect the creation of which we are a part and see God's handiwork in all His creatures, we pray to the Lord. That all Christians may grow in the gifts of the Spirit, love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, we pray to the Lord. Lord we also continue to pray for our intentions today, for the repose of the souls of Dr. Nehemi Tan and Salvador Martinez, for all our family and friends who have gone before us. We also include in our intentions those who continue to suffer from the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray for strength and grace for those who, who care for those who are affected 
and, and fight at, towards the end of the pandemic. So we pray to the Lord. Lord and we also pray for vocations in the church that many more men and women respond with generosity to God's invitation to priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father, you promise to come to us with your Son and make your home with us. Hear our prayers and with your advent grace, make our hearts a home where you can go. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spirit. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he has assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. And so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. O holy. Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, font of all holiness. Make holy their fortress. This we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion with the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
You proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking off the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jaime, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all of that in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints that please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The just judge will bestow a crown of righteousness on those who eagerly await his coming. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ. 
Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by His grace, you place your faith in, this, in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and your first coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may you make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now in devotion and the